Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome to a, a bit of an addendum video to the previous one. The reason why the previous one didn't exactly go as well as I thought is because the game has a bit of a weird way of opening windows and such, and because of that, it doesn't always capture things with my recording software. So one of the things that it failed to capture, which is rather important, is uh, this design ship. Over here, you can design your ship exactly as you like. Now, in the previous video, I talked about it, but you couldn't see anything. So this is exactly what you were missing. Over here on the top, you can design what type of ship you want. Everything between a battleship and a light aircraft carrier, standard aircraft carrier, even a seaplane carrier and a corvette. So you can go really, really, really small. Um, I'm not sure if this has any implications as to the displacement that you can set. Because I think I can set a Corvette with a displacement of 40,000 tons. But, well, by that point, it's not exactly a Corvette anymore, is it? Um, you can just set the class name. You can say it's developed from um, a particular type of ship. Like the Budabaki. I'm not sure um, what type this is. Oh, it's a seaplane carrier. Okay. Um, you can suggest a different name. You can just have the AI design the whole thing. Auto design of the selected type. So let's have them auto design a Corvette. Yep, there you go. There's your Corvette. So this thing is going to have a 700 ton displacement. It's going to be built at a yard uh, locally. And if you don't want or don't have the capacity to build in your own local yards, you can outsource this and you can have Germany do it or you can have the USA do it. So uh, apparently buying ships from other nations is a feature in this game. Beyond that, I do not know what MS2X1 is. Um, might be something later game. Same for the aluminium or aluminum superstructure. How much freeboard do you want? I don't know exactly how much this is going to affect the seaworthy state or the sea state of the ship. Speed, range, do you want it to go very, very far? Are you expecting to patrol all the way out to a colony? or not, um, or do you just want it to be in colonial service anyway? They will require, or sorry, they will contribute more towards ship requirements on foreign stations. So with these, you make sure that your colonies stay in line. Horsepower, machinery, weight, um, engine priority. Are you going for a base? So let's say you're prioritizing nothing. Do you want the ship to be really quick, or do you want the engines to not likely break down, so reliability? Propulsion, uh, oil and turbine, diesels, gas turbines, you've got options. How much do you want to cover with the belt? Do you want to have a narrow coverage or a normal one? How much uh, upper belt, lower belt, deck, deck extend, conning tower, everything? Armor scheme, slope deck. No, you can also just use a protected cruiser deck. You can even use the all or nothing armor scheme. Um, torpedo defense, I don't think we need that much torpedo defense on a Corvette, but hey, um, you do your ship. Accommodation, how many crew members are you taking with you? Again, how exactly this is going to impact the ship capabilities in a battle, I don't know. Um, whether this is going to make sure that you have... Oh, here we go. Ground quarters space, uh, saves space, but makes the crew more liable to bad health and morale loss. There you go. So making a ship um, quite spacious might do very well for having the crew stay healthy, as well as keeping the morale of the ship up, which, especially during prolonged engagements, could be a factor that decides whether you win or lose. Over on the right, you got the guns, the additional armament, and the graphics. I'm going to not have a look at the graphics because I want to have a look at the guns first. We've got a couple of 5-inch guns, uh, quality zero. I suspect this is something you might be able to research. You can see per these guns, per uh, range, what the pen is. So this thing is entirely unlikely to hit the deck armor, apparently. If I do something a little weird and say, you know what, I want to have 12... Okay. Um, I like my Corvettes with a 12-inch turret. A 12-inch turret is capable of penning the deck, but apparently deck pens can only be achieved with apparently slower projectiles as well as ranges of about 8,000 meters and greater. So at 21,000 meters, you're going to have a, a fairly parabolic arc, and the armor on the deck might just get penned by this 12-inch gun on a Corvette. Uh, can you actually field this? I don't know. 
No, weight remaining is negative 500. So yeah, this is not quite going to fit, which you might have gathered from the little graphic over on the left. Um, as for the rest, what do we have? We got how many rounds do you carry per gun? How much is that going to weigh your ship down? Is your fire control going to be local only? Or are you going to have a central range finder for the whole ship or even improved fire director? Uh, increased elevation increases the range and suspecting you'll also get better. Uh, yep, there we go. 23,000 meters as well as 3.7 inches millimeters. 3.7 somethings of uh, pen. You can also have cross deck fire, allowing wing turrets in certain combinations to fire on the opposite broadside. So this is something that is not exactly going to be particularly valuable to the Corvette. But it could be something that is rather quite useful for a uh, battleship. So in this case, yeah, I don't think this one's going to have it. But if I clear out the turrets, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clear out all the turrets, and we're going to add turrets. We're going to say, I want to have a um, port forward wing, starboard forward wing, and I'm going to have a uh, port aft wing and a starboard aft wing. So this is a DEST layout, as opposed to the usual ABXY, which means you got a forward turret, you got a forward superimposed, you got an aft and an aft superimposed. So in this case, if these guns work well enough, they might be able to do that cross-deck fire. So this turret right here on the starboard side of the ship might be able to go all the way over the superstructure. I doubt it, but I've seen strange things in Dreadnought, so I'll believe anything. Uh, maybe the one on the bow is more likely, so it's going to turn towards the port side and shoot over the ship, as opposed to only being able to, let's say, from center line shoot out to starboard, and the turret on the other side goes the other way. This just changed B4X29. I just really don't know what this means. I don't know how to impact it either. If I change... That does not change this number. Okay. Might be some internal game thing. I don't know. Um, what else do we have? NTR. Fairly important. Especially later game. Light NTR guns, medium NTR guns, NTR directors. Then, secondary guns and even tertiary guns. Tertiary guns, you can have a caliber... Um, up to 6-inch guns, apparently. Which is pretty hefty. Secondary guns, we can go as <laughs> as big as a 16-incher. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, the problem is the weight is a little bit of a problem. We're 13,000 tons over at this point. But yeah, uh, I'm going to have a main caliber 15-inch and a secondary caliber 16-inch. Because why not? As for tertiary guns, you're also going to be able to use these things um, with two turrets or two good turrets per gun, three or even four giving you almost a uh, French type of armament, which makes sense because I'm playing as the French in July 1935. Additional armament gives you torpedoes. You can add torpedo mounts again on all sorts of positions as you see fit, up to a maximum currently of four tubes, perhaps going to be increased by the amount of research that I do. Torpedo reloads are available. Reloading torpedoes is slow, carrying torpedoes is risky as they can explode from hits. So normally um, you get one tube apparently, uh, you don't get a reload. You can carry a reload if you so desire. Only works for above water tubes. So port uh, broadside, sub, I think submerged, means that this thing cannot be reloaded, but a centerline swivel mount probably will. So with this, you'll be able to reload this torpedo launcher and throw out some more torpedoes. You can even have your battleship, in this case, uh, bring some mines along with you. Maximum is zero. Uh, can a heavy cruiser do it? Yeah. No. A heavy cruiser can't do it. Can a DD do it? Yes. A DD can bring 140 mines maximum as part of the gear of the ship. So with this, you'll be able to start dropping mines. Exactly how this works, I don't know. I haven't worked with these things yet. Anti-submarine warfare, uh, you got depth charge throwers. You can get four of them at a max, at least currently. Or you can just forego it in case you decide that maybe fighting submarines is not that much of a deal. Radar and electronics limits, I don't have any radars. It hasn't been researched yet. You can bring flight installations such as a flight deck or a seaplane slash helicopter hangar, depending on, again, what area you are. 
Um, with the air capacity, you decide how many planes, helicopters, uh, whatever flying thing you bring with you, you have. So in this case, yeah, I don't think my destroyer is going to have a flight deck capable of having 15 aircraft. Would be funny. Uh, similarly for a seaplane hangar, apparently a flight deck is... A flight deck weighs less. <laughs> a flight deck weighs less weight remaining uh, than a seaplane slash helicopter hangar. Okay. I do wonder, if I just bring like one... I'm already... Negative that. If I don't bring any mines, that saves me some. If I don't bring this, if I don't bring a torpedo launcher... Can I bring a flight deck? Yes. Wow. Okay, so apparently you can bring a destroyer with its own aircraft. You can bring a destroyer which has a helicopter, well in this case uh, a seaplane with it. Later on, you'll be able to bring an angled deck, a helipad, and deck edge lifts. So you're going to be able to, like a Nimitz aircraft carrier, bring um, planes up on the side of the ship. As for armor, I don't think I need a whole lot of armor on my flight deck on the destroyer. I don't even know where they put that. You can also put side armor on the hangar. Um, ideally, of course, your aircraft carrier simply never comes under fire, but you never know. Do you want catapults with that? Sorry, this ship type, ship type cannot have a catapult. If you bring something along the lines of an aircraft carrier, then you can. You can have them forward, aft, amidships, uh, wherever you decide that you want your aircraft to be launched from. So let's say I want to have one on forward center line and I want to have one forward. This is going to add weight. Exactly how they contribute to the sea state of the ship, or to the combat capabilities, I don't know. Maybe you can launch aircraft faster, maybe you can launch heavier aircraft. I'm not sure how this has been implemented. Missile launchers, um, currently you do see the stats, but since I haven't actually researched any missile launchers, I can't actually put them on there. But you can see that heavy ship to ship range is 25k, medium is 20, and light is 6,000 meters. So at this point, um, an 18 inch gun still has a lot more range. At the point where you can actually get heavy ship-to-ship -ship missiles and potentially research better, uh, you'll be able to bring quite a lot of firepower over probably substantially greater ranges than 25 kilometers. Finally, we've got graphics. Um, this is something that right now mostly confuses me. You got advanced graphics for modding, so you can design your own warship template. Uh, you can change the color of the superstructure um, over here. Let's see. That's number three. Being colorblind, I can tell you, is not helpful. Let's make this something like very contrasting. Ah, so that... Right. Okay, so that is the layer of the superstructure. Anyway, with these things, you can change how your ship looks. Uh, if you wanted to have some sort of uh, bright color scheme, you can. Whether this adds any camouflage, I don't know. Perhaps, perhaps not. So, that's the ship builder. Uh, save and finish this ship. I have not developed a flight deck catapult. Then why are you letting me put them on the ship? Save and finish. All okay, excellent. Sometimes you're going to find that something is not quite right. Um, let's say I want to have uh, 10 rounds per gun. The game is going to go, are you sure? Ammo allowance is on the low side. Is this really what you want? So the game does do something to like give you a bit of an assistance and go, hey, uh, this is looking a bit light. Are you sure that's exactly how you decided the ship to be? Also, if you are uh, over the allotted weight, you're going to get a warning saying, uh, you know what, this might be a bit much. Ship is seriously overweight. The belt extended armor cannot be thicker than the belt. Design is not legal. Oh no, illegal designs. Can't have that. So uh, make sure your designs are legal, otherwise the lawyers will come for you. So that is one of the menus. Um, that's how the ship designer works. This is pretty much one of the key features that I missed in the previous video, and I thought you guys might like to see it. Just to be sure, uh, Doctrine 
and this is again going to work fairly closely with your ship designer as it indicates how the ship fights um, and what your overarching priorities are. So in this case I've set on uh, elite pilot training, I've set use a scout force, uncheck this if you do not want to use a separate scout force in battles, you can set the torpedo type for your uh, destroyers, cruisers, etc. You can say how much of a certain type of ammo you want, 50%, 50%, zero. Um, I could say, you know what, I do like, I'm not sure if I have it, 25% SAP for four to six inches, secondary armament that is. And, uh, no, save changes, there we go. And with this, you can change all of the way that your entire navy basically is going to work. Now, can you design submarines? Uh, no, but you can build them. So you can say, I want to have a coastal submarine, medium, a mine layer, or a long ranger. And you can do the same thing with a fort or a base. Keep in mind, at some point, a 13-inch coastal battery might not be that useful. By the time that the enemy is floating or is sailing around with a couple of aircraft carriers, I don't think your 13-inch gun, maybe your 8-inch gun, what have you, um, is going to be very valuable. It probably will not be. All right, these are the critical parts that I left out of the previous video because they didn't get recorded. Uh, they now have been. So I hope that this gives you a bit more information. The game is coming out on May 18th, so that's in a few weeks. If you have any questions, let me know down below in the comments and I'll see if I can answer them. And beyond that, let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. Thanks for watching.